TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But if we are live and you missed the live, this is where you catch them. The lit one live. Link down in the description. But anyway, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Yeah. Don't forget we do got the Patreon. We just dropped the business with Danny Dyer, the movie reaction over there today. Three tiers. I think the cheapest one is like $3.50. And y'all could do that if y'all want to, man. Uh, that's the easiest way to support me, man. To support me. <laughs> uh, this is the Discord. Whoever dropped this, I've already done this video before. I'll re-upload it soon. Um, and I think that's it, right? Covered all the bases. I feel like that was quicker than normal. Anyway, Police Interceptors, Season 21, uh, Episode 7. This just went up eight days ago, and I didn't see it? Okay, whoever be putting these up, this is Danny's. Salute. <laughs>
An Audi A3 is no slouch, with a top end of 129, but it's no match for Macca in a 5 Series. Audi A3, in grey, IC3 male driver. Macca's an advanced driver and died in the wool road crime team, with him at the wheel and Gavs. CrossFit coach, so if buddy get out and run, he's definitely getting caught and going to jail. Intel, they're a marriage made in crime fighting heaven. DRA is low, traffic is light, football is light. Vehicle two up, two adults, male driver. Now it's driving itself. Stay down. Get it. Leaving Gav to go after the passenger, Macca chases down the driver. Yeah, they're on sport. Don't take it on that last road name. Uh, important real estate, male, black coat. Drop onto the floor now! Get on the floor! And the cameraman was slow. <laughs> he gave up quick. NH66 failed to stop Crammer Road, Newark. Gav and Macca are in a Paddy's Day pursuit of a runaway Audi. Vehicle two up, two adults, male driver. Driver and passenger have decamped and done one in the dark. Oh, just to let y'all know, I tried to do Police Night Shift 999. That's, that's a good show, uh, but it got blocked. So I'm waiting for it to get unblocked, man. Shout out to the uh, first responders, too, whoever's in here. Hitting the likes, man. Making, sharing a video. Let's make this the, the, let's make this a big premiere, man. It's Sunday. Y'all not doing nothing. Is there a football game on or something? Salute. They're on sport. Don't take it on that last road name. Gavs after the passenger. Mac is caught up with a runaway driver. Black coat. Drop onto the floor now. Get on the floor. Red dotted in the taser sights, he's not arguing. Got one there, uh, got one detained driver. Turn over now! Put your hand behind your back! Hands behind your back! Just look at our, uh, is the NH? Uh, don't know a road name. I think it's Let's Be Having You. Right, don't move. Don't make any sort of movements. Hands behind your back. One detained, but where are Gav and the passenger? Gavi, you alright? Get on the floor now! Get on the floor now! And behind your back! The interceptor seems to have things in hand. Mate, and behind your back, back now! And behind your back now! And behind your back! Put your thumb behind your back! And finally, in handcuffs. Do the same, I've got passenger. <laughs> You're under arrest, mate. I'm on suspicion of possession with intent to strike cannabis. The passenger has questions to answer, but he wants to answer the call of nature. Can you what? Got my wheelie out. It's a wee. I need a wee. You're gonna have to hold on, mate. Alright, you right, stand up if you want to. No. Gav's suspect is a desperate man. <laughs> and he's not making things easy. Macca's driver is coming more quietly. He was driving this one that's failed to stop. Bro said I need to wee. Did y'all say I need to wee? We would say like I need to pee. Because it comes out of a pee. Not a weenus, but okay. The desperate passenger <laughs> has got his pants down and... That's a relief. NH66. I'll, I'll give you an update now. So, start of a 10, why did they run? What, what are you doing around these parks these days? Huh? The answer may lie in this bag full of cannabis. So, what? Just stay there. Yeah, You're keeping up, mate. Look, mate, if you stay chilled... Up. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, mate. I'm, I'm chilled, bro. I know. You stay chilled, we all stay chilled, I'm eh? Chilled. Meanwhile, the driver is less chilled. I don't hey, do that, mate, mate, listen. Get back in the car what right now. Doing? He's escaped Macca's car to get involved. Hey, 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 hey. Mate, get back in the car. Well, don't push me. I'm talking to him. Why don't Listen, you him get back in the, in the car. Right, sit down then. Well, sit, don't do that to him on sit camera. Sit down. 
He's being searched. They're almost. Talking about, don't do that to me on camera, bro. You are under arrest. You feel me? He's taking it in turns to kick off. Stop acting the goat. Talk. You dickhead. Right, sit on the floor a second then. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor and stop being a muppet. Muppet. Don't smell your name, you dickhead. Being all aggressive. There's only one mug, mate, and that's you. Well, yeah, you're being aggressive. I've not even had a chance to search you. You could have a weapon on you. You've had weapons on you in the past. Yeah, but when was that? Yeah. When was that? When have you ever found me a weapon, you muppet? Hey, you're all right. Just need to give him a proper search, mate. I've cuffed him up, but then he's ripped his own pants down and started taking away. But then he's becoming quite aggressive and... Uh... You can call him a muppet. You can call him a mug, a D-head, which is a valid description of this particular... You know what I'm saying? Just because, you know, when you bald, I also bald, you know, sometimes. Um, having known him, I thought I'd stick him back on the floor because I don't know whether or not he's got anything concealed down his pants. It's a nice collar from some tidy teamwork. Gab's knife crime team background helped spot the car. Macca's driving was textbook road crime team. I was more bothered about the car getting rammed when we came down the dead end. So I was, that's why I was trying to stay close to it so he couldn't reverse ram me. Um, which delayed me getting out for a sec. But, yeah. I thought, to be fair, he looked quite athletic so he'd do me, but he gave up. It's nice and easy. <laughs> When you sell cannabis at one at 10 quid a gram and you look at this bag and there's probably a kilo there so there's a thousand grams so there's probably 10 grams worth of weed they're loaning one gram deals as well as ireland st patrick is the patron saint. how would he have that much on him though like what kind of stupid criminal is that Things of engineers you know I mean? and he couldn't have engineered a better st paddy's day gab 30 seconds before that happened said i want a car that had a load of drugs in it. So, and it just so happened to drop on our lap. It's almost like um, it was placed in front of us, that my wish had come true. Oh my God, did I tell y'all about my, fr was this Friday? It was Friday, I was on the bus or, set or Thursday. One of these days I was on the bus to go get my daughter from school, coming from, from like Opalaka or something. You know, I was in the, the bus go through the hood. So, so, so I'm on the bus, G, and all I hear is a char, like a Hellcat Hemi engine. Skirt. Get in the same lane, like the bus going this way, and then there's traffic going this way. So it's go. He get in front of the bus like this and swerve, and all you see is hella police cars come behind him. Phew, phew, phew. I can't believe I forgot to tell y'all this story. It's Sunday. Like, this was, it was the wildest thing that I've seen in Miami yet. <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. And then, like, they had, like, undercover cops. Like, they had a Nissan Maxima with dents all around on it. Hella dents on the Maxima. Like, police lights. I was like, whoa, that's a definite undercover. I ain't never seen no undercover cop. Like, car like, like, like that. Like. I'm talking Nissan dented up, looked like a beater, hit the lights. I was dang. All you see is big trucks, Ram TRXs, then police, then police cars started coming. I was like, like the driver who cars. ran from the Audi and into the sights of Macus Taser was convicted of driving without due care and attention and failing to stop. He got nine points and a total of two hundred and ninety-nine pounds in costs and fines. Both driver and passenger are currently under investigation for possession with intent to supply. I'm always happy, you know, locking up criminals. So yeah, I mean, I'd do this for free. She drives like a dream. And your first name? Uh, Jeffrey. Uh, Wayne. Uh, oh. Jason. Jason Jeffrey. Lawbreakers aren't known for their honesty. No middle names. Smith. What? Smith. Smith? Yeah. Middle name? James. Jason James Jeffrey. In truth, they're usually liars. I'm not saying you're... I've seen this episode. This particular part of the episode. I think they're just using this as a recap. Oh, it was this season. Or lying. 
<laughs> but at the minute, you can't get a right answer. Okay. When you know someone's lying, it can be almost a sadistic sport because you've got the information in front of you to completely prove them wrong beyond any doubt at all. But you can sort of let them tell their lies and put themselves on a bit of a hook. It can be quite rewarding and uh, entertaining. Ken Tinley's on patrol in the student quarter. And it's not just potholes making him sit up. There's a vehicle check here, yeah, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, go on, mate. Well, these were. Bravo, Papa. Silver Astra. The Astra in front checks out, but something feels off for Ken. It's um, Huntington Street towards. Well, it's Huntington Street towards Mansfield Road. Strange route. Stranger still. Okay, so if it checked out, what's the reason to follow? There's the pair of passengers leaving the car while it queues for the lights. Two lads out on foot in the middle of the ATS. Then heading in opposite directions. It's pick your horse time, Ken. Oh. Hey, mate. You all right? What's going on there? I'm going to see my friends. You get to see friends. Let's come back here for a second. I've just got one lad stopped. Um, Junction with Hunter Dunn Street, Matsu Road. Oh, you're from Nottingham or Stoke, I am. Let's come see one of my friends down here. Yeah, it's just a bit strange behaviour. Two out the two out the back of the car. I'm talking to one of the occupants. The other one's gone onto Mansfield Road. White male, black hair, like a black and orange tracksuit top. You got ID on you? No, I um, I really have no ID. Right, it's fine, mate. Where do you want it? Where you obviously were travelling through, which is a student accommodation, you've yeah, got a real issue with drug dealing going on around there, on, brother. Yeah. Which has turned our attention to you. I've tried to follow yeah. your car, it's took a strange route. Instead of going right up there, it's gone left, left, and gone yeah, up this way. Yeah. And then in the middle of the road, you've got out, and your mate's got out, and you've walked separate directions, not really acknowledged each other. So I'm going to give you a search under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Yeah, All right, yeah. just come to my car so no one can really see us. Of course, mate, do your thing. And there was obviously some cannabis it's in here in, at some in that point. tube. It's like a little spliff container, though. Yeah, yeah. And where's the cannabis gone? He smoked I, it. Yeah, it's just Matt a bit one of genetics, <laughs> alien copies in it. F two miracle fifteen. You don't realise how many strands of cannabis <laughs> there are. I googled it the other day. It's like three hundred odd strands. Sure Whatever strand. There's more than that. And of weed was in his pot pot. There's nout in it now, and a cursory search turns up nothing else. Waste of time. I'll, I'll leave it to it, well, and um, we're all good. All right. That's mate. Take care. See you later. We're definitely right to stop him. Definitely right to search him. Quite clearly, there's the there's the little bits to suggest he's involved in a little bit of something. Maybe just a smoker, but very strange behaviour. And in the strange behaviour stakes, Team Knife Crime has backed both horses. I don't even think it was that strange of behaviour. Uh, all right, man, there's a little bit of traffic. You got to go your way. I'm going to get out right here. Me too. All right, I'm going to holla at you. Go your way, I'll go my way. What you, that ain't... Our plane cars managed to follow the other lad that went out. So we've got a second bite of this cherry. Second oh, bite of this cherry. Horse 2 has changed his colours. Entering a shop wearing the orange tracksuit top in which Ken clocked him, Exiting in a white T-shirt. Adam, just get ready to go jump out because he's just changed his direction, just in case he does run or anything. As a rule, innocent people generally don't run from the police. So mark this sprint under suspicious. <laughs> With Adam after him on foot, Dan returns to the unmarked. Product. While Ken gets his toe down. It's Team Night Crime versus the running man. Under the street, left left Woodborough Road. The suspect is giving it a good go. And Adam has his work cut out. 
But in plain clothes, without 15 kilos of kit to contend with, he's gaining. Oh, he's in plain clothes, too. He's a plain clothes officer, too. Not the kid. Not the kid. And the runner runs out of steam at the final hedge. You got it? You're nicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to walk back where we might have dumped something. Yeah, yeah. While Adam and the Sarge track back in search of anything suspect on his route here, Ken gets down to business. Then we'll start searching you, buddy. All right. I'm sorry about that, mate. Got some cannabis here, I think. There's also a phone. On the like a mobile pavement. Yeah. Found it on the floor, did you? Happens all the time. I find things on the floor all the time. 199. Don't you? Yeah. Find them all the time. Are you from Stoke as well, are you? A search turns up a bit of personal weed and not much else, but it's fair to say his behaviour is suspicious. He's gone into Londis, tried changing his appearance, got rid of his top to expose his white t shirt, and I've got out of the car, gone round behind the bus stop, but he's seen me coming. So he's set off in a foot chase. And as I've been chasing him, he's dropped a single bag of uh, what I suspect is going to be coke. As well as the weed in his bag, the coke dropped on the floor and the mystery phone on the pavement, there's something else unusual in the vicinity. <laughs> Either a hedge fund manager misunderstood their job description or this was deposited by someone with something to hide. Let's start being honest with each other. Yeah. All right. The load of cash that's up there. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. No. No. That's strange. Because from the Volvo's in-car camera, it looks a lot like you shoved a grand in the bush. We probably recovered. I'm not even gonna lie. I wouldn't have even threw that in the bush. If you caught me with a, with some personal use for both items, class A and B, you just caught me with enough of personal use. And then I, I got money on me, okay. You already searched me, which, what, money warrants a search, so I'm already, well, it's whatever. Now y'all can say, y'all, it's not your money, right? No. 1,500 quid that he's denying any knowledge of. Um, we found um, some Class A drugs in cocaine that's been discarded, and we found some Class B drugs in cannabis. But only it all adds up to a trip to the Nick. Where the runner imparts two bits of information. He says it should be 960, 970 something quid. One, it isn't 1500 quid, and two, it is his money after all. He's been strip searched and we've not found anything else on him. Um, he's growing in confidence a little bit now, thinking that he's just going to get like a, an out of court disposal of caution or something for a bit of coke and a bit of weed. So he now is claiming that the hundred, uh, the thousand pounds or near a thousand pounds, which he said wasn't his, is his. Wherever the money came from, it right. may not be going home with the suspect. Not happy to give him that back. He probably will get a caution for possession of Class A and Class B drugs. Um, and then he can go away and he can prove by way of a bank draw or slip or something or, you know, online banking that he's just withdrawn. I think he said it's between 900 and 1,000 pounds. It's not a great win, but we'll be in possession of nearly 1,000 pounds that he's not going to be able to get back. Time to break the good news. There's all your stuff back. We're obviously keeping your phone because you say it's not yours. Yeah, okay. yeah. We're also keeping the cash. Okay, because you've denied it on numerous occasions on the side of the road. That was you. See, I would have never denied the gas. Yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've tried to conceal it, potentially, if you're saying it is yours. So, unless you can prove to us that's your cash, you can't have it back. The runner who fell at. I, I, I just think MFs, I mean, MFs be thinking too fast when they be running. Like, why would they only found enough of personal stuff? Like, you ain't got to throw the money. Like, he, had, he threw the money like he had a, a brick, of, a kilo on him or so. You good. The final hedge was caution for possession of cannabis and possession of cocaine. As for the wad of cash, he denied all knowledge of, then later admitted to dumping in the hedge. That remains with the police, who are still waiting for proof of how he came about it. Left, left, Woodborough. 
Each time the knife crime team chase down a runaway, public safety is paramount. But chases like this are pretty low risk, but when a suspect gets behind the wheel, the stakes are raised. Jordan 4 is not the best shooter runner. Dan and Matt are back on patrol, tailing a Seat Leon with Intel markers on it. It's going to be worthy of a stop. As Ken approaches from the opposite direction, the driver pulls into a Premier Inn, and he doesn't look like he plans to book a room. Bouncing over a speed bump, he's away and heading straight for Kent's Astra. Which he slips past like a four-wheeled eel. Matt and the Sarge still on his tail. Two police chases in one video? They are going crazy now, ain't they? Police in a second. I'm going to call in to stop. Uh, we are Liverpool Road. The Seat hammers round a roundabout. I know a lot of y'all watch these without subscribing, man, but a lot of y'all are subscribed. But if you are not subscribed, subscribe. And makes a suicidal move in front of a bus. Advanced driver, advanced vehicle. Um, we are A60 outbound towards Woodington. The target's trying to thread through oncoming traffic at 85 miles per hour. Two adult males, uh, both late 20s, mid 30s, no people in the vehicle. The wrong side of a traffic bollard, he's pushing his luck, and other units are closing in to try and stop him before someone's hurt. Hey, I'm trying to have a chuckle. Three bridge, third quarter, somewhere. Sierra Kilo 5, we're behind Sierra Kilo 4, in the train, tip train. Red light. Ignoring the red, he sails through the junction, cutting across oncoming traffic. It's a miracle he hasn't come a cropper. Yeah, that could have been dangerous. I ain't even gonna lie, but I'm pretty sure the people hear the police sirens, even though I don't. It's what's the road, it's right, right onto Kirk Lane. The driver's still playing chicken with oncoming traffic. Speed is 5-5 and a 3 zero. Goose is cooked. There it is. It is a big crash, crash, crash. As smoke billows from the engine, Matt and Dan nick the driver while Ken checks on the occupants of the car he hit. The cops need to escort the suspect from the scene pronto. It looks like. Oh man, fire too? The fuel line's gone. Luckily, cops carry fire extinguishers for just such eventualities. Job done. The runaway driver who went up in smoke got well and truly burned. He was charged with fail to stop, driving without insurance or a valid license, and after the passenger in the car he hit required emergency surgery, causing Damn. serious injury by dangerous driving. He awaits his death. You're definitely going to jail. Nah, no suspended sentence. You gone. You you from the set. H and P Marchfield or where something. A in court. Coming up. Top and I. Yes. I believe that the criteria for deployment of AS air foes is met. One of the most resource-heavy incidents interceptors deal with is the firearms job. Officers to protect members of the public from a person that is in possession of a firearm. Reports of a gun can trigger multiple armed response units. Drones, a chopper, and four-legged backup from the dog unit. Such weapons often turn out to be less than lethal. So they're not to be um, potentially gas-powered uh, ball bearing guns perfect and legal to own. They look kind of real though, huh? <laughs> if this wasn't on there, it'll look a little bit real. He got a beam on there and everything. But interceptors don't wait to find out. 
Now we do get some calls probably pointing in the direction of an air pistol or a BB gun um, as opposed to a genuine firearm threat. However, we treat them all very seriously, professionally, and hopefully that, that public perception for those who do end up looking on, see that we do deal with them professionally. It's a quiet shift for the dog unit. And Jen's just promised Quantum a sneaky weekend kebab. OC, do you want Delta 2-2 uh, also? Boy, Quantum. But duty calls after worrying reports of a rifle. It's a firearms job and a gun's been pointed at someone, which is why dogs are there. To give a flight option of anyone that may run right in the middle of work, so we're not gonna be getting that kebab, are we duck? Quantum blue. <laughs> Jen's hammering the dog van. And just because they missed out on kebabs doesn't mean they can't enjoy themselves en route. <laughs> but as Jen and Quantum approach the scene, they're all business. Someone's windows have been smashed in. They've phoned a family member who's... Oh, this is like a road rage incident? ...come to the address to sort it out. The family member oh, no, is allegedly okay. the older brother of the guy seen with the weapon. He supposedly had a ding-dong in the street with a group of men who smashed the front windows. The men fled when little brother aimed a gun at them from upstairs. That's described as a single barrel shotgun, so it's going to be a case of containing the address in a firearms deployment. Jen rendezvous with the firearms team near the property. In Florida, if that, if like the way they laid out the, the situation, if that had been in Florida and dude poked up that whatever single barrel, whatever out the window, he could have actually pulled the trigger. <laughs> Cause Florida got a stand your ground um, law here. It's wild. You can't like Florida is a different type. Like you can't do certain things that you can do in Chicago and Florida because somebody illegally you know what i'm saying do that to you and and it don't even got to be that serious it don't even got to be a big commotion you know what i'm saying and they, they florida is different i'm telling you they they sell guns at pawn shops like jewelry store pawn shop clothes baby formula all of be in the one store like golly oh, sorry. Come in for a bag of chips, and there's a whole Glock 13 right. I mean, not Glock, Glock 17 right there. It's tough. Where do you want your dogs? Back in the stick. Back in the stick. Yeah, and where do you want us to the front of the house? Front of the house. Let's get on the road then. We're going to the front. Uh, the other dogs are in the back. Just a case of uh, containing the dress. It'll be and call out. Get all the people out of the house. Make it safe. And then, depending on what we've got in the house, they'll want the dog to go in and search, check for any persons. Uh, but that all depends if they got cats, if they got other animals. So, just have to, it's just quite fluid. The location could hardly be worse for a firearms deployment. Smack bang in the middle of work, stop that. It's a busy residential street in a family area. They need to tread carefully. <coughs> With the dog unit in place, firearms move to contain the rear via an alley alongside the house. The gate at the end is locked. The call goes up for the big red key, a handheld battering ram that opens all doors. While the entry team works, other firearms cops. It don't open all doors. I seen it fail last night. Cops prepare baton guns. A less lethal weapon that fires plastic rounds and can drop someone at 25 meters. 
but it seems the younger brother, alleged to have aimed the weapon, has surrendered. But it seems... This the younger brother, whose shoes he got on? Why they this big? Bro got on some size 16 shoes. Alright, never mind. The younger brother, alleged to have aimed the weapon, has surrendered. He's in cuffs and secure. There's one lad left inside. He's getting lead for the dog. There is a dog in there. Uh, he's going to bring him out as well. The older brother is still in the house, talking to cops through a broken downstairs window. To secure the property, they need to get him and his dog out. But locals trying to help need to be out of the picture. casually stroll out there on the scooter with the streets clear the older brother and his dog leave the property just come to me come to me yeah perfect that's it just come to me all right now the house is reportedly empty else in there quantum want all the smoke with that dog local residents are kept at bay no stay there firearms led by interceptors rich and paul move into search The stairs go up and there's, there's a slight landing. They cover every inch methodically. Clear behind that, uh, whatever it is. Confirming that no one else is in the property. The building's clear, it's just a loft, but uh, there's cobwebs all over the hatch and it's struggled to fit in it anyway. And retrieving the weapon. It is an air weapon. Um, it's quite substantial, it's got a big scope on it. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, that looks real. That looked like it got a, 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 a something lethal inside of it. If anyone pointed that at you, I think, uh, well, if anyone pointed that at me, you'd think it's genuine, potentially. I can see why it's been described as a shotgun as well, with the, the two barrels almost. It certainly scared a member of the public enough to call 999 and reportedly scared away the alleged attackers. There's a guy in the house. He's uh, attacking my brother. He's a kid brother. I've got up. I said, hey, get off him. He's got off him. He's gone outside. Picked up the spade. Smashed all in this. After that, I picked up the spade. I didn't pick the spade up to challenge him. Picked the spade up so he couldn't smash no more house up. I took the spade off the guy. Yeah? He picked up, picked up steel bar and smacked that under it. It was this confrontation that prompted the younger sibling to aim an air rifle at his big brother's attackers from the upstairs window. It's only an air rifle, that's all. And, and, and but, you know, this is all ganging up outside, and there's a lot of them, yeah. From the air I go lie to you, you could be taking serious action about any any type of thing that look like a, a, a like it can discharge a bullet, you know what I'm saying? As rightfully they should, rightfully so, make people think twice about it, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I would be interested. If a if a UK cop, like a, just a regular street police, you know, the Panda Car or or any of them, actually came to America and was a cop in America for thirty days, like I would be interested if they did a swap somehow. But it got to be like London, like London, swapping with Chicago or something, or like it got to be major cities. You know what I'm saying? Not, I'm, yeah, yeah, Cali, um, F Miami, Chicago, Philly, Philadelphia, New York, something like that. Not even New York. Take New York off. Those four. Because New York is, is it's illegal to have guns in New York. So you still got gun crime, but, like, I want them to see where it's, I want it to be like, hey, it's legal here. Now what's going on? Which I what do, what do y'all do? 
That would be interesting. And then the gun. And I thought, thank God for that. No further action was taken against either brother regarding the incident with the air rifle, and no arrests were made regarding the alleged attack in the street or the damage to the windows. The rifle was seized, and though Quantum never got his kebab, it's better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> Quantum. It's Sunday afternoon. 617. Literally. Good Sunday afternoon today. But there's no rest for firearms officers, rich and okay, chalky. Okay, we've got a potential cloned vehicle that's uh, been spotted on the AMPR system. Road crime are on a fiesta suspected of being on false plates. Chalky is on the hurry up to help them box it in. Heading up to uh, provide options for uh, preemptive tactical options near oh, man. So we got a bit of ground to cover. And cover it they do. Kill the sirens, mate. Rich is a proud owner of a chief constable's commendation. He's also in possession of a pair of eagle eyes. That's literal. He looked like he could see about three miles down the road. And having spotted the road crime team, they're now in convoy with an unmarked BMW and an unmarked Skoda. Just about. Two, three, we are third in the stick. Understood. Three key plant vehicles on the stick then. Roger, Harry. Yeah, it's just in front of Mac, who's two in front of us. A little bit of musical cars as an unmarked Volvo joins the party, then leapfrogs the Beamer to go second in the stick, and they're ready. Now they just need a word from Macca in the lead car. And there it is. Okay, we're gonna do it anyway. Next stop. Tidy and as tight as they come. Macca's got the driver of the suspected clone car, so Rich deals with the passengers. Hey, hope you're right, Flower. Nothing to worry about, love. You okay? Is it your child? Do you want to come and grab her? No, she's spinning out. Yeah, no problem. Just come and grab her. Come on, baby girl. Okay, let's get this show off the road. I'm spare. I'll this is like a 12 car T pack. Golly, they had him pent up for sure. One, two, three, four. A four car. Jump in, have you got the keys? I've got them, yeah. You got, okay, I'll get back. Rich has the keys. And after pulling into a nearby car park, he reveals they're not just the keys to a Ford Fiesta, they're the gateway to Gear Stick Wonderland. In my 20 years of policing, I've never seen a gear stick like that. Be careful when you see gear sticks like that. You don't know where that gear stick being. Crazy. What's bringing men to pleasure driving this week? Not if you're driving it with a pocket full of drugs. What's that? As this guy turns out to be. Another one. You told me you only had a bit of cannabis, and now you've got class A, more cannabis. It's not the driver's lucky day. Didn't work today. Despite the rabbit foot on his key ring. Thank you. Ah, lucky rabbit's foot. Well, it's not very lucky because you had all your drugs took off you and your vodka took off you and you're in court. And now they've turned up two bags of suspected Class A plus eight bags of weed, the interceptors are going to dig a little deeper. Got your pin number for your phone then, mate. Oh, well, I forgot it. Yeah, I think if we check your phones, all right. If you ain't got messages on there, we'll treat it as possession. They're in two minds whether to nick him for possession or worse. He's got about, aren't they, 89 bags of cannabis on him, a couple of bags of coke. He says it's all personal use. Yes. He's given up the pin number on his phone and we've just had a quick look at it and he, James has arrested him on suspicion of uh, possession of intent to supply. There are enough suspicious messages on the mobile to warrant taking him in on suspicion of dealing. All he needs is a ride to the bridewell. The chariot awaits. No further action was taken against the female passenger, but the driver with the funky gear stick and unlucky. That's what he's saying. Like if you knew, if you knew what was in your phone, why you even? 
Bigfoot received a traffic offence report for driving with illegal number plates. He is also currently under investigation for possession with intent to supply Class A and Class B drugs. Coming up. Front number plate. Yes. Where is it? Okay. Uh, I ain't never seen that type of car. What was that? That's a, um... Damn. I know what kind of car that is. It come in a P1. Oh, McLaren. There we go. It's a McLaren. I wonder if it's a 7, 720 or 500 or 520. Whatever they come in. They gotta wash their own cars? There's a lot to learn as an interceptor. Sweet. I think that's about done. Happy days. Even before you hit the road. You missed a bit. Did I? Yeah. Hold on then. After 28 years on the force, Clark is a gold mine of information. Pursuit tactical advisor, self-defense instructor, development coach, and master of the car wash. You look like you're washing the floor, Fred. In fact, he's been dishing out wisdom to this particular rookie for his whole life. Yeah, I'm working with Finn, PC1414, Finn Clark. <laughs> My life. Oh, that's his dad. After two years in uniform, Finn's keen to be an interceptor like the old man. He keeps Five saying to me, seven. you know, when can I come out, when can I come out, and quite frankly, I just got fed up with hearing it, you know. I get it at home, I get it in the dining room, I get it in the kitchen. Dad, 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 when can I come out? So, here he is. The law of the rookie. Finn gets wet, Dad gets the keys. <laughs> the difference between like, modern day policing and sort of policing when you joined, everything's technology now. When I've done statements and stuff, it's all on my laptop. Two and a half years ago, you would have had to get your pen and paper out and write it up and then put it in a filing cabinet. When I first started, um, yes, I know God was a lad, but when I first started, you know, if, if you charge somebody with an offence, then you would type that up on a typewriter. Well, the first job of the day has come in. Oh. I'm a little older too, but I, ain't, I don't think I've ever seen a typewriter in person. <laughs> That's not, I don't think I've ever seen a typewriter. Time. Good old fashioned clean. I don't believe I ever wrote a letter. I mean, I mean, yes, I it's radio. Arnold. Yeah, what are the details of it? It's a cute car on the We'll do it. Leave it with us. A two car crash may have brought the A614 to a standstill, but Clarkie is motoring. Knows these roads inside out. I'm going to go at it from the 614 because it's right at the top of the hill with the junction A614. So if we come in from the bottom, we're going to get stuck. After a masterclass in map reading and fast driving, Clark and Son are on scene in a jiffy. Tango all one state six. Dad takes the traffic. Right. You stop. Junior joins a recently arrived paramedic to learn what's gone on. Hello. Hi there, you right. drivers, passengers, witness. Driver. Anyway, two poor blurts. Driver of. Range Rover. You're the Range Rover. Yeah. You're the van. There's been a collision between a van and a Range Rover, and while Finn talks to the van driver. So, you, so, you've, been, so you've been driving this way. Yeah. And then he's pulled out on you. His dad reads the damaged vehicles like a book. Look like I'm looking at them, what I think is, the white one's been coming from Nottingham towards Ollerton. Um, the Range Rover has come out uh, of the junction. I need to confirm that, so that's not definite at the moment. And it's no great surprise to find that Clarkie's read was bang on. You, you were driving from, from here, weren't you? You coming out, have you pulled? I was coming out of there, yeah. yeah to, and the, right. right, and the van was coming down. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. We're probably looking at... Look like an episode of UK Dash cams. Camp 47 or something. A, a uh, driver without due care and attention. It's in Range Rover. Yeah, because the Range Rover's pulled out into the main road. Yeah. In, into the path of the van, so it's straightforward, really. Yeah. Less straightforward is clearing the road with a growing queue of impatient drivers. 
Can you get back in your vehicles, please? Yeah. Get back in your vehicles. I'll sort it out as fast as I can. Can you get back? Yes, I've heard you. I am trying to sort it out. Can talk to us like humans, not right. robots. Thanks very much. I'm talking to him, not to you. Yeah, I know. Okay, thanks. Can you get back in your vehicle, please? Me, yeah. I'm trying to shout to yeah, him. Stop okay. being so weird. Go and get in your car. <laughs> really? Somebody just had a crash and you want to start like that? Get back in your car. Onlookers dealt with. Right. Clarky needs to get the traffic moving. Well, I'll let you run it, mate, if you want to. Yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to run it. And with son on traffic and dad on recovery and the Range Rover driver. I'm reporting you for the consideration of the fact of prosecuting you for the offence of driving without due care and attention. It's not long before the damaged motors are away, the 614 is flowing, and Team Clark is back on the road. Where is the McLaren? Here we go. Though not for long. At two minutes left. Mansfield. Ah, there we go. Check it for right. me, Because although this 720 McLaren might have cost no. Oh, that's the 720, too. That's the 720. That ain't the top one, but it's, it's nice. <laughs> It's fine. Well, for 200 grand, it's missing a crucial 16 quid's worth of plastic. How are we doing? Not putting a plate on a McLaren. Who, nobody's putting plates on McLaren on, on supercars, hypercars. Hey, hey. Is that you? All right, thanks. Front number plate. Yes. Where is it, please? It's in the bonnet. It's in the bonnet. Why is it not on the bonnet? Apparently, not everyone's as careful as Clarky when it comes to cleaning cars. Came off with the uh, car wash. Came off in the car wash? Another one, so it was, it was like hanging off. Um, I've got the one to put on. Sadly, for McLaren man, the master of the car wash is also a pretty hot detective. All right, so when did this happen? This happened... Uh, ages ago, because these are freezing cold, and these have been in there for ages. And Clarky's met his fair share of supercar drivers. But I think you don't like a front number plate on your nice car, because you don't really go. I really don't mind. It's okay. white on white. Yeah, okay. Good thing about Florida, you don't need a front license plate. I think they're trying to do that in Chicago too. You only need the back one. There's no marks on it, yeah? Yeah. Is there? For when it happened, it's had a car wash since so I got the car wash boost to poly polish all right. the excess. All stuff right. So you're it. driving around with no front number plate. I'm not being funny. I'm gonna put okay. It back away. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to put it on now. Okay. To uh, well, you do have to because yeah, yeah it has to be no. stuck on. No but um, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with it by way of fixed penalty. All right, that's a hundred pound fine. Let me get some paperwork for you. You're a busy man. You've got a lot going on in your life. You want to get out of it? <laughs> what do you like? Huh? What do you like? <laughs> Number plate. Give me two secs. In fact, do you want to write this one out? Yeah, can you? Yeah. You got a tour book? I've got my tour book, yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look. A TOR is a traffic offence report, and Finn's book has one just for Mr. McLaren. Hopefully that'll remind him that before he sets off on his journey, he makes sure there's a, a registration plate. Bro, for the pay the ticket and continue to not have a plate on his front. You know what I'm saying? He's not putting that. Plate on the front of his car. He's never going to put it on there. It's nice. He needs to wrap it or something, though. Grey in the UK? It matches the sky. And hopefully this... You got a uh, pen on you? Yes, I have, yes. ...will remind Finn that the pen can be mightier than the laptop. Yeah, you happy with that? Look at him. Big fan of Look at him. Just look at his face. All right, look at me. Look See at lad. him again, smile, lad. <laughs> Proud dad. I'm really disappointed I'd have let you off. Just <laughs> 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 nice. Good fun. All right, lads. All right. We have some good mates, really, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we have a good laugh. And so ends a successful first shift for Clarky and Son. It's over. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your posts. I'm gone.